It is um, Friday, the 30th of May 2014. We are here at Copenhagen with Mr. Lave Broch. He is candidate number two of the, uh, people's, of the people's movement against uh, the EU in Denmark. Mr. Broch, um, now you have got uh, one member again in the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. And um, what are the main uh, issues, uh, the main demands of, of your platform, which you are now uh, going to, um, to implement? Yes, you can say we have four pillars. The first is about democracy. It's about rolling back the power uh, from the EU, but also try to create a more open and democratic uh, EU. The second one is actually uh, the question of high environmental standards. We're working for and voting for the highest environmental standards, but also animal welfare, health issues. Uh, the third pillar is about uh, the Nordic welfare model. We, are, we think the Nordic welfare model is a good thing to have and we are defending it uh, in the EU system. But also the last thing is the question of global solidarity. That's our fourth pillar. Uh, so you can say in these different areas, uh, we will try to influence as good as we can. Um, regarding uh, democracy, you want to give um, power back to the national states. And what about the European Parliament? Yes, uh, we would say actually that it's, uh, the centralization has gone way too far in the EU. There is a German survey uh, some years ago which showed that uh, around 80% of all national laws are decided by the EU. But also on local level and regional level, the EU is uh, having a lot uh, of power. So we think that the time has come to roll back the power. But uh, as long as we have the EU, we think the EU Parliament is of course an institution which we can use. Uh, compared to all organis uh, other institutions, I would say that uh, I think it's really bad for democracy that the EU Commission has monopoly on making law proposals. Uh, as far as I see it, all national parliaments uh, should have the right to make uh, proposals to change the laws, also inside the EU. Uh, and uh, as a second best, it would be good that the EU Parliament could do it. Um, what is important enough uh, um, so that we need referenda on it regarding the EU? Well, we think that there should be referendum every great uh, treaty changes, uh, like the Lisbon Treaty. I think it was uh, very bad for democracy that it was uh, implemented in most countries without a referendum. Uh, the Fiscal Treaty, which means that the EU is now having influence on all countries' fiscal policies, uh, who are part of that, of course, uh, is also uh, undermining democracy and should have been put to referendum. But also the banking union, which is now uh, on the way that EU can decide when banks shall be closed and so on, that must be uh, a question that the population will be asked about. Um, regarding environmental issues, uh, where have, do we have to be particularly aware um, what, the EU, what the EU is doing regarding our environment? Well, I think we have to be aware on many different areas because EU is influencing the environment, uh, both with the agricultural policy, for instance, pesticides in the groundwater, EU is in influencing health, uh, the level of uh, uh, substances which are hormone disturbing or create cancer or allergics. Uh, EU has also undermined the organic products. Um, in Denmark we have a very high and strong uh, uh, brand for organic products and there has been discussion in EU to ban the national brands and just to have one from the EU. That would not be good for the whole organic uh, idea. But also we have the situation where EU is actually undermining the, the concept of what is organic. EU has allowed that you can put nitrate and nitrite in organic meat products and that is promoting cancer. Uh, EU has also allowed sulfate in uh, organic wine and I think a lot of people would think if they buy organic they buy healthy. And therefore I think it's terrible that EU is uh, undermining the organic concept. What is your position on um, the um, transatlantic free trade uh, agreement TTIP? Well, uh, personally I support that we lower customs and trade barriers. 
But the TTIP has also uh, the system of special courts, which uh, probably can uh, overrule national decision making if companies would lose future profits. And I think that is a problem for democracy if you're actually limiting, let's say Denmark would ban something, uh, a pesticide, and if a company then later says, well, we are losing profit now, then uh, Denmark has to pay for it. I don't think that's a good thing for democracy. Um, um, you're uh, talking about global solidarity. On which areas do you focus? Well, that's on quite many areas. You would say the trading policy, EU is still giving export subsidies which undermine uh, production in the poor countries. EU is making overfishery in in different African uh, countries, seawater. EU is also undermining the peace process in different places. For instance, in Western Sahara, EU made a trade agreement with Morocco, which include Western Sahara, despite the UN tries to solve the question with a referendum. We can also see that EU terrorists have been uh, bad for peace negotiations in different places in the world, where Norway uh, has played a mo much different role. Norway doesn't use the terrorists from the EU, Uh, and Norway is more neutral and impartial. So, for instance, in Colombia, Norway could be a negotiator of peace, while EU was just saying, you are enemy, you are friend. Then the Norwegians were sitting down with the government and the group FARC, and, and they actually managed to get a peace agreement. So there will actually now come a distribution of land inside Colombia. And uh, regarding the Ukraine, how do you see the role of the EU so far? Uh, I think EU has uh, behaved uh, like an elephant in a glass uh, shop. Uh, EU has uh, uh, should have stepped away instead of uh, going in, because what EU has done is uh, only to provoke uh, the situation. EU is not a neutral, impartial part in this conflict. Uh, and I think uh, a trade agreement with the government before they actually are elected was not a good idea. What needs to be done is to create a frame inside the UN where Ukrainians from each side can talk about uh, how can we create a federation and a peaceful development for all Ukrainians. And um, if I in your platform I read that you are against EU militarization. Yes. And how far? Which? What are you opposing regarding the military and foreign policy cooperation of the EU? We think that EU shouldn't have anything to do with military. We think it's uh, there shouldn't be a defense policy at all. And I'm happy that Denmark is not part of the EU defense policy. But when we look at it, we can see EU is one of the biggest trading. Uh, weapon traders in the world. EU has a defense agency in Brussels which support the arms industry. The arms industry are selling weapons to countries which constantly violate human rights. Uh, but we also see that the uh, EU is behaving, as I said, uh, in a way in different conflicts where they are worse than the situation. In Sri Lanka, for instance, the, the Nordic countries were having a peace mission and Norway was also trying to negotiate peace. And the EU put the Tamil Tigers on a terror list, which actually was part, uh, one of the main reasons the whole peace process was ruined. And it ended up in a, in a manslaughter in, in Sri Lanka. So what we see is actually that the EU is looking at own interests in many conflicts in the world, thinking about money instead of thinking about how to create peace. And I think the Nordic countries, Denmark, and together with Norway and other Nordic countries, should promote peace in the world and not uh, only support building up a new superpower. Um, you have, um, you have want to protect uh, the Nordic um, uh, welfare model. Um, in how far uh, might this be undermined by the EU? Well, we can see, as I said, with the fiscal treaty that EU is uh, deciding and giving advices to all countries or, or uh, demands to the countries how to act. And EU doesn't have the same focus on fighting unemployment. And there is not the social side of EU, which, you know, in the e in the Lisbon Treaty, it's written that all member states have to increase their military capabilities. But there is not written that all countries have to increase their uh, schools or the hospitals or uh, other things like this. So, 
uh, we can see that there is a focus which is on price stability. Uh, there is actually now 120 million people in the EU who are either poor or close to poverty. Uh, and, and there are 26 million unemployed. I think here we have a great uh, problem that the EU is, is focusing uh, not on questions which we would do in the Nordic welfare system. Um, does, uh, let's have uh, um, a look at the Bilderberg Conference, which has yes. started uh, yesterday and which is um, going on until Sunday here in Copenhagen. Yes. Um, all inter alia, the former Danish Prime Minister, Mr. Uh, Anders Fogh Rasmussen, is there, mm. and um, many people from Danish economy, from uh, also from Danish uh, media. Um, what um, is your opinion about um, well networks like Bilderberg? Well, uh, I think that people can always meet privately if they like so, but if they meet as politicians and and uh, important civil servants like Anas Fogh Rasmussen uh, and they act outside their private uh, role, there should be openness. And we know that in Bilderberg uh, conferences a lot of things which has to do with our country's development and the whole world's development uh, is being discussed. And uh, I think that that is uh, happening in closed meetings where you cannot report what people are saying is a problem for democracy. And I think also that uh, we should demand more openness about this. The whole system of Bilderberg is actually undermining also that we have open frameworks inside the UN. Uh, I think that would be much better if they would make the same discussions with access to civil society, to the media, um, inside the United Nations instead of having these uh, closed clubs. Many things. Thank you very much.